The result of the voting is as follows. The draft resolution received 15 votes in favour. The draft resolution has been adopted unanimously as resolution 2231 2015. One has to give it to the Iranian leaders. Despite basically winning in the recent nuclear arms talks and about to be flush with released cash, they still hate Americans and still refuse to admit they will knuckle under to the great Satan. This as one would expect. But is there any chance, any chance, the old guard will die out soon enough and take the acrimony with them? Let's ask and get to work. First on the dance guard, he's the Islamic world expert from MadiWatch.org and U.S. Army veteran Tim Furnish. Joined by former CIA analyst and senior fellow at the Center for Security Policy, Fred Flights. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Fred, I'm going to begin with you and ask that very simple question, because now there's a lot of people coming in and saying, look, the mullahs are old, the people who are in charge are old right now, and you have a young, dynamic group of people there, a citizenship that is desperate to get back in the real world and they can change things. Is any of that really possible in your opinion? Well, it's interesting. Uh, there, there are, the Obama administration is arguing that there's some possibility that this agreement is going to lead to major change in Iran, that the whole attitude of the Iranian regime is going to change. There's no sign of that. This agreement is strengthening the moles who run in the country and will allow them to establish a legacy. People who are arguing this is going to lead to some generational change, I don't know what they're smoking because I don't see any evidence of it. All right, Tim, same question to you then, and it comes along with this caveat that the president, John Kerry, everybody along the line says, look, we have to do something and this is the best possible deal, plus there's still that generational change. Is, are they just blowing smoke? Well. And I, I think this will be like maybe the second time in six and a half years I've ever agreed with anything this administration has done. I think it's much ado about very little with this agreement. Uh, I think Fred's exactly right. Uh, it strengthens them in many ways. It gives them more money. They are probably the world's foremost sponsor of terrorism. Um, but I think that this deal is neither the worst in history, nor is it, uh, nor is it going to bring peace in our time. I think it's a, I think it's a defensible means of keeping Iran possibly from not going nuclear uh, with weaponry uh, for a few more years. And I think in that regard, it's probably the best of a bad situation. All right, I want you to both hear Secretary of State John Kerry defending the Iran nuclear deal. This was on CBS Face the Nation on Sunday. We believe that Israel, we believe the region, will ultimately be much safer because of this deal. Now, if, you don't, if we don't do this deal, if Congress says no to this deal, then there will be no restraints on Iran, there will be no sanctions left, our friends in this effort will desert us. We will be viewed as having killed the opportunity to stop them from having a weapon. They will begin to enrich again, and the greater likelihood is what the president said the other day, you'll have a war. All right, Fred, to you. John Kerry, right or wrong? He's completely wrong. This is a terrible deal. It actually increases the chances of Iran getting a nuclear weapon. It shortens the, deadline, the timetable to run a nuclear weapon. Iran will be enriching uranium during the deal, developing advanced centrifuges during the deal. It will per be perfecting the technology to produce plutonium. There's weak verification provisions. I think John Kerry believes what he just said because he and the president are so desperate for an agreement, they've talked themselves into this disaster. And I think this is one of the worst agreements negotiated in American history. Tim, there is still that idea that we have to be able to check. We're going to have to give the Iranians notice before we come in. And let's face it, you give somebody 48 hours notice and you can pretty much hide anything. We're going to give them weeks notice before we actually walk in and check. So can't we just say that maybe there's some pieces in here, but still we're putting ourselves at great risk? Well, I don't think we're putting ourselves at great, great, great risk because the Iranians aren't stupid enough to attack us. I mean, the Ayatollahs have long beards and turbans, but they aren't idiots. Well, but certainly um, when I say us, I do mean the Middle East as well because, let's face well, it, Israel is sitting right in the shooting range. Right. Right. But again, with that, Ed, as you and I have discussed, I don't agree with this idea that Iran wants to hotwire the apocalypse by attacking Israel. I just don't think that's a good reading, an accurate reading of either Iranian history, uh, ancient or modern, or of Twelver Shia theology. I think Fred's exactly right. I agree with those that say this will strengthen Iran in that it will give them 
uh, more or less regime insurance. It will do that. But I think Iran, I, I, Iran's not stupid enough to ever actually use nuclear weapons. And again, I think that the only other alternative to this, I, I don't think the sanctions regime is, is really worthwhile. I think the only other realistic alternative to this is a full-scale invasion of Iran. And we know that's not going to happen under this administration. Fred, I only got 20 seconds left, but that's what people talk about. If not this, then we have to go in, boots on the ground, and invade. That wouldn't be smart either, would it? The alternative is the status quo. What we're doing is legitimizing the nuclear program of a rogue state and state sponsor of terror. We're allowing Iran to buy lots of nuclear technology. We should keep stay on the course we are right now, wait for a president who can show real leadership to stop the Iranian nuclear program. One way or another, this thing is going to come to a head. And gentlemen, I'll tell you what, we're going to talk again here down the road because now we have to then start looking for those triggers or those little instances that tell us that Iran is not playing by the rules. We'll do that another time. Timothy Furnish, Fred Flights. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Coming up next, telling it like it is, why Donald Trump and Arthur Fonzarelli are exactly the same person. Break out the sharks. The hard line continues.